Hello, Mad Cappers. Say hello to my beautiful visiting cousins. And I put them to work modeling right away. And say hello to the fabulous Rosie Cap. This is a winner, folks. I really love this cap. And I've never had so many compliments when I'm out and about as I do when I wear this. The visor wraps almost around the head completely. And it's flat on the back, so it makes it easy for driving. You can do the band in two parts the lining is a single layer and you can replicate that lining piece on the front if you want to just do a one part band on the outside and the inside like this brown cap and to tie all the pieces of fabric together i make a beautiful little custom pin and i'll go over that again at the end of the video or you can decorate the cap with some fabric covered buttons like up there in the right corner or you can buy a little sparkly brooch and decorate it that way or you can just leave it plain and enjoy your lovely new rosy cap so warm and cozy stretchy fabrics like polar fleece are recommended for this cap and i'm going to introduce you to my new favorite tool it's the hat pressing form that comes with the cricut hat press and i'm going to show you how fabulous it works to produce a professionally finished hat when you're all finished your sewing so we'll get into that as well now for the rosy cap i really love to mix and match fibers with my plain colors of polar fleece and again i'm going to show you how to make this pin just to tie all the colors that you use for your cap together and the the pieces that sit above the visor, the band that goes around your head and the top need to be built from stretchy fabric. So you can make a nice woolen fabric stretchy if it stretches on the bias. For the lining, I'm always gonna use polar fleece because it's just so soft and comfy. But for this woolen fabric, it's not stretchy on the grain, but I was able to use it because I cut the piece on the bias. And I'll just show you the difference now. So when you stretch on the bias, look at that. It has lots of stretch. So folks, make sure you have the stretch going around your head. If you choose to, you can cut an extra piece of fabric for a lining for the top. Today's project, I'm just going to use a single piece for the top and the seam is going to be on the inside of the hat. But for the next video where I show you how to make this pattern, but with a full brim, I will also show you how to line the top. And you can see this isn't polar fleece, but it acts like fleece. It's a stretchy woolen. And same with this vinyl, it stretches. So I don't need to cut those on the bias. I could use them for my band and my visor top. And here is that beloved Cricut hat press. And right now it's on sale for $99 in Canada and the US. You can use the actual press to apply appliques to your hats or to do custom made labels and patches and some vinyl on your hats. But today, all I'm going to be interested in is this wonderful pressing form. And it does come with an, uh, an, an alert for nut allergy because Cricut has used walnut shells to stuff this form. So if you're allergic to nuts, then this isn't for you. But at $99 for the press and this pressing form, it's really a business in a box. It's a super value and it does a terrific job as you'll see because I'm gonna use it for this project. And if you turn it on its side, you can even use it to help press your visor for caps or even your full hat brims. It's really super. And I'm always going to put a little piece of uh, cotton, of a quilting weight cotton in between my finished cap and my steam iron and my steam iron is set to uh, blast steam on the wool setting which i find works great for fabrics like polar fleece and the woolen fabrics i use in my winter hats all right now let's get down to the pattern there is a free pattern download for the rosy cap in the average adult woman's head size or size medium and it's on our website and there's a link in the description below for your options there is also a paid pattern package for a nominal fee that has five head sizes from extra small to extra large the pieces for the cap visor that we're making in this video as well as a piece for a full hat brim that's going to be made in the next video and please pay attention to the settings for your printer output you want to use that page one to make make sure that your 
output measures up to the same measurements as mine. So that bigger line at the bottom is five inches and the one above it is 10 centimeters. So I'm using a navy and gray plaid that is not stretchy normally, but it is on the bias. So I'm cutting my lower band on the bias and now I'm going to cut my visor and I'm going to use the same fabric on the top piece of my visor. I have transferred my visor pattern piece to a piece of poster board that's nice and stiff so I can easily move it around and trace around the outside when I want to cut my piece of stabilizer. And I'm using extra firm Pellon stabilizer and I'll put that in the link below. And I'm just going to trace around the outline of my visor pattern piece onto the stabilizer. And then I'm going to add that stabilizer to the back of the piece of plaid that I'm going to use to be the top of my visor. And I'm just using that piece now to determine where the position of the print is going to be on my visor. And once I've decided, I'll pin it into place. And then I'm going to use my sewing machine and I'm going to sew all around the outline of that visor, both that outside big curve and the inside curve of the visor. So I have a thread outline now, and I have two pieces of my visor sewn together, and now to add the third, and I just have to decide whether I want the top of my hat to be navy or gray. Those are the two solid colors of fleece I'm gonna use. I've decided to put the gray on the underside of the visor, and for my lining, I will use the same color of gray as well. But right now I've got my right sides together of my visor fabric pieces and my I'm working on the back side of the plaid and following along that line in the stabilizer. And now I'll just trim away the extra fabric and get ready to do my actual seam, which is three eighths of an inch or one centimeter. And I use my handy dandy magnetic seam guide to help me do this. But a steady hand works just as well. So now I'm ready to finish that outside seam edge. And I'm going to just make sure everything is flat and it looks perfect. So now I'm just gonna use my serger to clean up that edge. You can clip it and do a zigzag, but I'll use my serger and that's how that looks. And now I have something to hold on to as I roll that seam out as much as possible so that that point where the gray and the plaid meet is right in the center of my outside edge. There's the same amount of gray on one side as there is on, of plaid on the other. And I'm rolling with my fingers and clipping as I work my way around that outside edge of the visor. And once I'm finished, I'm going to just finish off that outside edge with a top stitch. And again, it's about three eighths of an inch or one centimeter into the visor. And it's just gonna finish off that edge nicely, holding all those layers together at that seam underneath. And now when I flip it over, I have a line of sewing on that inside curve that I can see because of the way that I sewed the stabilizer onto the back of the plaid at the very first step. And I'm just gonna sew through all three layers now and sew the visor pieces together and clip away the extra fabric on that inside curve. And being careful not to cut through what is now an edge stitch holding those three layers together along that inside curve. But I'm gonna cut through at the center with a small notch marking my center front of my visor. And now I'm gonna get all of my rough sewing done on the rest of my hat pieces, including the dart down the center of the top. And that dart gives our top a nice rounded finished shape just to match the rounded shape of our top of our heads. So I'm just pinning all of those pieces for the top and the band together, right sides together, and I'm going to just sew up the back seams of all the pieces and the dart for the top as well with my 3 eighths of an inch or one centimeter wide seam allowance. So the next step is to sew all of those seams flat 
And we're going to remove the bulk from inside the hat by flattening out those seams. So I've opened it up on the wrong side. And from the top side, I'm just sewing up one side of the seam, pivot at the top and come back and sew down the other. So I have a double top stitch on the good side of my hat. And on the other side, I have a double top stitch, but the raw edges of that seam are flat. And I'm going to do that to my band pieces, my band lining piece, and that center dart that goes down the back of the top of the of the cap. And not only does it help your hat feel more comfortable when it's on your head because you don't have bulky seams taking up space inside the hat, but it also looks nice too. It can be very decorative. So just take your time and do a very neat job. And for the top, you come up one side of the dart, pivot in the center after you've cleared the seam and come back down the other side. And if you were going to line your top, you would just do the same thing with another piece of fabric and put the two wrong sides together and sew them together with an edge stitch. And once you've finished sewing your seams flat with that top stitching, we're just going to mark our center front with small notches. So center front of the top, center front of the band lining, center front of the band pieces. And on the top, we're going to do the center sides as well. So we bring the top notch or the front notch, sorry, to the back seam. And at each end of the fold, we cut a small notch just to mark our center side points. So now we've got all of our rough sewing done. We've got our back seams all sewed and we've got them flattened with some top stitching. Our fleece is stretching in the right direction, which means the stretch should be going around our head. And the fabric piece that we're using at the bottom of the band, we cut on the bias because it was not naturally stretchy. So now I am pinning the two pieces of the outside band together, the right sides together and I'm matching up the notches and I'm going to sew them together all the way around and I'm just matching all those notches and clipping which makes my job of easing the two pieces together as I sew them together a lot easier and I will also just make note here that my seam width is 3 eighths of an inch or one centimeter unless I tell you to do an edge stitch which as the name suggests is close to the edge and narrower than my regular seam width. So I'm going all the way around the right sides of my fabrics are together so my brushed side of my fleece my velured side is facing the brush side or the, the woolly side of my plaid. And rather than reverse stitch, when I get to the end, I just over sew a little bit. And I'm just going to check my sewing and make sure everything looks good. So now it's time to sew the band, the outside band, onto the top of the visor or the outside por portion of the visor. And both are the plaid fabric. So I'm going to match the center notch on both. And starting from the center of the visor, with those right sides together, I'm going to use my regular seam width and I'm going to sew right to the edge of the visor. Sewing from the center right out to the outer tip on one side. And I want to make sure that I catch all that rough bit at the very edge of my visor so that it's going to be out inside my seam. And I'll trim that little extra bulky part away with my scissors so it doesn't uh, make any discomfort in the finished hat. And then I'm gonna flip the piece over and I'm working from the underside of the visor now with the bottom edge of the right side of my band underneath and starting in the center again at that center notch. I'm going to sew the visor and the band together, working to the tip of the visor straightening the two so I'm matching up the raw edges as I go along and I'm just making a note of where the first half of my visor ended at the back of the band and I'm going to try and space them out so they're about the same distance from the center back seam of the cap once I've finished 
And I have some play here because the band is cut on the bias. So there's a bit of give there, but also I want to, to take away that rough end, the rough tip of my visor so I can shorten it a little bit by just sewing some of that rough edge off the seam and trimming it so it's not bulky underneath when the cap is finished. And when you're finished, check your work. And what I love about this cap is that that visor almost goes around the whole band, but it's flat on the back. So it's very comfortable for traveling, for driving, for just about anything that you want to do in the winter and even for wearing under your hood. So next we add the inside lining of our cap and right sides together. Now we're working on the underside of the visor though. So we're going to put the right side of the lining against the underside of the visor and we're going to sew it onto our cap, matching all of those notches and the back seam all the way around. And I'm sewing along the same seam that I just made to attach the outside part of our band so that I can see where I've sewn and it makes it easy just to repeat that same path that I took. And my lining is underneath right up against the feed dog of the sewing machine. And we'll sew through all the layers as we take our time and match those raw edges together on the right side and slowly work all the way around. And I just over sew from my starting point once I work my way all the way around. And once I do get all the way around, I just pull my two pieces of band, the lining and the outside band. Those two pieces, I pull them away from the visor and just straighten out the bottom edge of the cap and then match the raw edges from the band pieces together at the top they are still open, but we're going to clip them together and then we're going to do an edge stitch to close them before we add the top. Matching those two top edges so that they are sitting perfectly in line with one another. Just one last step before we close up the top. And that is that we have to try it on and see if it fits. Hello! So for me, it fit, but if it didn't fit you, if it's too big, there is a solution and you can just watch up at the top corner as I show you what to do if your hat is too big. Before you sew the top of the bands together, you can add a little piece of elastic at the back and just run the elastic on the lining side on the wrong side of the lining in between the two edges of the ends of the visor. And just on the lining, on the wrong side of the lining, down towards the bottom of the cap to make my cap a little bit tighter if I needed to by adding some elastic. And as I sew the elastic on, I will stretch it so that there'll be a little bit of a gather, but it'll be on the inside. On the main screen, I am just cutting a couple of notches on the sides of the band. So I match the back seam and the front notch of the band now that it's sewn together to cut a couple of side notches and I will use those side notches to match up with the side notches that I cut in the top. So I am matching up the back seam of the top with the back seam of the cap and the front notch of the top with the front notch of the cap and the two side notches. And I'm going to ease that top in now with those notches as my guide. And I've got my right sides together. So I'm working on the wrong side of the top. And if I was going to line my top, I would have done it before this step. <laughs> I will show you more in depth on how to put the lining into the top when I do the hat version of the rosy cap. The hat version has a full brim all the way around. So that will be the next video. And right now I'm concentrating on sewing my top onto my cap body as neatly as possible, trying to keep a consistent seam width as I work my way around, matching up those notches and easing the two pieces together.
And once again, I'll over sew when I get to my starting point and I've just cleaned up that rough edge inside with a serge. And there you have it. I have a finished cap. I'm just going to set it on my hat block to see that it fits perfectly. And it does. My hat block is a 22 and a half inch or 57 and a half centimeters in circumference. And then I'm going to slip it on to my new Cricut hat pressing form. And it fits perfectly there too. The form you can manipulate to fit almost any size. It's very flexible and I'm just gonna adjust my hat from underneath and you can see that the form has a handle that you can hold on to underneath the hat. But I prefer to set it on something that'll just lift the whole hat up off the table and the form. So I've got my little hat stretcher there, but I've also used a bowl, the bottom of a bowl. And I've just put my thin cotton on top of the wrong side of my hat and I'm pressing the top to get that nice curved shape. And I'm setting it with my steam iron, which is set to the wool heat setting. And that little piece of cotton acts as a barrier, so I'm not gonna burn my fleece fiber ends. And I don't linger in any one place too long either with my steam iron. You'll get the hang of it. I'm holding it up with my hand now from underneath. So it's very versatile. You can choose how you wanna hold this form when you're pressing a hat. And now I'm just gonna flip it around. And you'll see too that the hat form has that oval shape, just like my hat blocks. And a nice seam right down the middle that shows me the middle of the top of my hat. So it's quite easy to line up the, the shape of the form with the shape of my hat. And I'm just gonna repeat and I'll put my pressing cloth down in between my hat and my steam iron and give a little blast of steam all the way around. And I'm also have manipulated my seam that joins the top and the bands, the sides of the hat in towards the center of the top of the hat. And now we get to decorate our cap and a flower pin. My customers love their flower pins. You could take it off if you need to clean the cap or you could wear the pin on your jacket. But a flower pin is a very simple way to really give your hat a wow factor. And I'm using a circle of craft felt, the stiffened craft felt that you can buy at uh, most craft stores like Michael's, I think they have it at Walmart as well. You can certainly buy it on Amazon and I'll put links below in the description as well for that. And a safety pin. And I make a little long rectangle that I put on my open safety pin and glue from behind. And you can see what I'm doing there. I just set it down on the circle of felt and now I have made myself a pin back. So the next thing I wanna do is I wanna cover a button and I ha actually have a cutting machine for cutting circles, but you can just cut a circle of fabric with your scissors and you can just cover a regular button and just use your glue, your hot glue to hold the fabric in place or you can just run a needle and thread around the outside of your fabric circle and tighten it up around the button. But there I've made myself a little fabric covered button and you can buy the fabric covered button kits at most fabric stores as well. And then I'm going to use my Sizzix Big Shot and there's a link for Sizzix in the description as well. If you want to invest in this kind of a machine and the dies that work with it, these are great investments. My machine has been working hard for me for, for years. These, some of these dies are 10 years old and they're still cutting. So they have lots of different flowers. They have um, butterflies and they have uh, branches and leaves. There's all sorts of things you can choose from. You can see my die is well worn, but I will put the numbers of the two that I'm using in the description below as well. And I usually cut two at a time, two, uh, enough to make two flowers at a time. And I just mix and match flowers to create a really pretty distinctive pin. And I'm just picking up the colors that I used in the hat. 
So the center of my button is the plaid fabric and I'm using the gray that's under my visor for two of the layers of the flower. And my third layer is the navy blue. But you don't have to make a pin for your hat. You can leave it plain or you could just sew on some buttons or you could buy a fancy sparkly pin from your favorite jewelry store. It really looks special though when you use up the scraps from your project to make something that makes your hat extra special. And I think the flower does. And here you have it folks. There's an assortment of rosy caps, all sorts of different flavors and colors. And oh, I'm in love with all of them. Well, hello, beautiful hat. And here, let me introduce you to the hat version of this pattern. Yes, that will be the subject of our next video. But in the meantime, let's just enjoy the caps that we made today and all of the great hats and hoods and scarf patterns that are coming up soon in the next few months. And here I am saying hello. I love my new cap. It looks nice under a hood. It's covering my glasses. And now I have to say that I'm looking forward to a little bit of snow falling on my new cap. So until we meet again, folks, I want to thank you for watching my videos. Our channel is growing. I am grateful for your support. I'd like to especially thank our patrons and our channel members for supporting our channel. You can follow us on Facebook and Instagram. Super thanks are always appreciated. If you haven't subscribed, please do and like and share this video with all of your sewing friends. I'm Tori Capes. I'm a certified Milner. That means I went to school to do this and I look forward to showing you how to make the rosy hat. We'll see you very soon. Bye.